how to make the perfect IA graph take 323. Oh my goodness, this has taken me a lot of time, energy and stress to figure out all the glitches here in Google Sheets so I can show you the easiest, simplest, step-by-step -step way to make a really good graph. I hope the perfect graph for your RB Psychology IA. Bear with me here, we'll go step-by-step -step process. You wanna have a graph that looks like this, where you've got a nice column, individualized standard error bars, all clearly labeled, clearly showing the comparison between the two conditions of your experiment. So I've tried perhaps a dozen different online graph calculators, all the free ones. I didn't want anything where I had to create an account, log in. I wanted to be able to fully customize the labeling. I wanted to make it really clearly displayed. And I found that Google Sheets was by far the best and easiest. I couldn't, I'm not sure how to do it on Excel. Uh, don't ask me how to do any other software. I've become an expert on Google Sheets. I almost had to figure out coding to figure this out, but I hope it's gonna save you a lot of time and effort. So. If you, I, I, you might have already tried this and you've got a graph that looks like this with a narrow space with individualized error bars, or perhaps you figured out how to get a wider space but you couldn't put the individualized error bars or change the colors so these are different. I've figured out through, I must say, a lot of trial and error how to do that. So let's go through step by step uh, the process of creating the graph. First of all, make sure you've got your raw data in a, a nice clear table like this. So this is a completely fictional IA that I created. I've got my 10 participants and their scores. I just imagined I was doing typing words per minute, drinking caffeine, no drinking caffeine. Of course, you couldn't do this for your IA because this would be an ingestion study. Um, and I've got my comparison here of the mean. I simply calculated that, you know, highlight all those and go over here and hit average, that will do the mean. Now, if you're not sure to do the mean, median, or mode, I've got a separate video you might wanna check out first before coming back here. For the standard deviation, there's probably a button somewhere here to do that someone knows about, but I just simply went to this standard devi deviation calculator, copied and pasted my values in here, and hit calculate. All right, so I've got, now I've got my um, caffeine, no caffeine, and my standard deviation. Really important to remember, I'm not going to uh, bar graph my standard deviation because that's got nothing to do with my hypothesis. My graph has to clearly re reflect my hypothesis. And your hypothesis in the IA is going to be the effect of um, one variable on another, right? Your independent variable. So you need to compare the two conditions. The average scores is what you're comparing. Okay, so let's have a look. How do I do that? First of all, I'm going to highlight these cells. Now, Someone's going to be watching this thinking, oh my gosh, this is such an old man backwards way of going about it. But trust me, I must have made it ugh, at least 50 of these graphs in the last couple of days. And this is uh, what I found is the best way to do it. So I've got my two bar graphs here. It's looking pretty bare and plain and boring at the moment, but let's jazz it up here. Looking ahead, I want to, make, I want to add my standard deviation bars to my individual graphs and I want to be able to change the color. So in order to do that, I have to have a different series down here. Now I'm going to add a series. I'm going to begin with my bottom value, 23 to 22. What's that? B, 23, 20, 22 to 23. Okay, so I'm going to add here. Now I should just be able to type it in the search function, but I can't because I think Larry and Sergey don't want me to be happy, but that's okay. B, 22 to B, 23. All right, so I'm going to hit okay. Now this is all going to get messed up here. Don't worry, just bear with me. Now I'm going to add another series, the top one, B, 21. No, I can't just type it in there, can I? I have to hit this. No, I don't want to. I want to click that little wee square. Select a data range. That's what I want to do. Okay, so B20 to B21. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to remove that. Voila, I've got my two bars, nice space in between. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, the last time I tried to make this video, I got this horrible space in between. Why? Because I had the lower value. Um, in the beginning. If we see here my setup, I had 20 to 21 and then 20 to 23 and I had this massive space in between. So if you have that problem, that could be why. This is why, um, again, I've made too many graphs the last couple of days. Right, so I've got my basics here. I've got my key. I've got the, the general labeling. Um, sorry, the general values here. Now I need to personalize it. So this is pretty simple. You'll probably know how to do this already, but if, okay, go to chart titles. All right, I'm going to call mine caffeine and productivity. I think generally speaking, you know, you can just put what was your, what were you measuring? Um, for me, for this one, how do you spell productivity? That's not how you spell productivity, productivity. I've written that word so many times the last couple of days. I'm not, I've forgotten what it means. Right, and then I go center, cause I'm an old man, I like that. Now I kind of want to give my title a subtitle. So I'm going to call it figure one, cause it's the only image I've got in my graph. And I'm going to call it something specific, the effects of caffeine on typing per 
minutes. Okay, there I have my, my uh, more of a statement clearly of my independent dependent variable. So it's clear what my graph is representing. Ideally, I think a general rule of thumb is that I should be able to show my graph to someone who's never read a single word of my IA, but they'll recognize what these results are suggesting. I, I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb. Now I need to have a common mistake. Students don't have a clear title showing what the graph is representing. And they don't have clear labels for their axes. So vertical axis chart is words per minute. You want to avoid having something really vague in general like result or median or mean score. I want to state specifically what my words, uh, what my dependent variable was so I know. Now my horizontal axis, I can simply call this experimental, um, uh, actually I can just say conditions because experimental might get that confused with control conditions, right, conditions. Okay, because that's pretty vague in general, but I'm going to double click my little keys here and I'm going to uh, personalize these. So double click the blue um, and it should come up. There we are. I can just type straight in there. This is why I really like Google Sheets because the personalizing uh, is very, very intuitive. They do do a good job of making that kind of stuff. Okay, now I need to make sure I have my right label. This is the lower score. This is no caffeine. And then now why, you might ask, does it go red here and red here and blue and blue? I don't know and I'm not going to spend any more time on Google Sheets to try to figure it out. But if you know it, pop the answer in the comments. So I've got, now this is starting to look really good. So what I want to do is I'd like to have those white labels here that show what the values represent. So that's really clear for my reader. So uh, I'm going to go to series and I'm going to go down here and hook, just click data labels, voila, now it's added. The last thing I'm going to add to my graph, I think, let's just have a look, title, yes, right, it's nice and clear, the results are accurate, and my words per minute, conditions, no caffeine, okay, this is looking really good, oh, oh, now, here is something I almost forgot, this is a really common mistake, right now, we're looking like a pretty significant difference, there's quite a big gap here, but I feel like my graph is a little misleading, and the reason is, if I go over here and look at my raw data, you know, I had quite a few scores over 50, but yet my y-axis only goes up to 50. I've got 56, 70, another 56, 54. So I'm going to extend out my y-axis to 70. So I just double click the y-axis, go down here to minimum value is zero. I definitely want to start at zero for this particular graph because a lot of, you know, you watch any TED talk and some of you might know that's a pet peeve of mine that they all start, you know, at like 30 just to maximize the difference between the two graphs. I don't want to do that. I want to, uh, I want to show my results accurately. So that's a really, really important thing that you need to remember is your graph. You're not exaggerating the effect, right? You're displaying the effect. And if there isn't one, if there's similar, well then show that. Don't be afraid to show that. Now a little wee thing, this is just me being maybe a bit OCD, but I quite like, ooh, I quite like the minor grid lines. That looks a little bit more professional, doesn't it? I quite like the look of that. Um, and there was something else, major ticks, minor ticks. Uh, no, I don't like the look of that. Major ticks. Yeah, I'll keep that. That looks okay. How are we looking now? Clearly labeled axis. That's not misleading. All looking pretty good. I'm going to go here to series. Now the finishing touch, the cherry on top. The thing that's caused me a lot of stress where this whole problem started, I want to add error bars. Now you would think if I went to standard deviation, that would make, that would, uh, it would work. But alas, again, Larry and Sergey don't want me to be happy, so I go over here and I'm going to click constant. Now this is why you need two different series, because see here apply, apply to all series. I want to go to uh, let's look just no caffeine, and I'm going to scroll down to constant, and I'm going to put in my standard deviation calculation for the no caffeine uh, condition, which is 8.7. So as I put in 8.7, you'll see that bar. Oh, 87. No, 8. 0.7, you'll see that bar change. Great. Now I'm going to go and change to the caffeine. Scroll down to constant and my value is 11.6. There we have it. Voila. Now I simply go over here to the uh, there, download and I download as my image and I'm going to insert that into my graph. There we have it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Where'd you go? Where'd that go? Error bars. No, constant, 8.7, stay there, good, okay, great, there we have it, right, there's my perfect IA graph, um, you don't have to make it overcomplicated, it's probably going to be a column graph, if you're not sure, if there's, if you have a, a, an IA where you're thinking a column graph like this, where you've got just two bars comparing two conditions is not the best choice, 
please pop a, a question in the comments because I, I, I'd really love to know the exceptions to this rule. The only one I can think of is you might, if you're doing glands and cunits of primacy and recency effect, you might have a line graph to show the serial position effect. However, in that case, you would I would recommend having a second graph because my advice in doing the serial position effect is that you choose to do the recency or the primacy effect and you're still going to compare uh, the differences in one of those two effects across the two conditions. So you, would, you could have a line graph for the serial position effect and a bar graph just a note in the um, you are allowed to have more than one graph as long as one of them's accurate but that's the only case where I would um, where I have in the past suggested to students and, and accepted the fact that they have two graphs I think I've covered everything there we have it I hope that saved you a lot of time effort and stress and you end up with a really good graph that looks like this good luck any questions again pop them in the comments. By the way, head over if you're interested our store. If you're a teacher, um, you can buy the uh, IA teacher support pack with all my slides, resources, example IAs, and um, you, there's the ebook available here, or you can buy it together, save a couple of bob, and buy it as a download. Students, you might be interested in the flashcards. Um, whatever. There we have it. Okay. Good luck. Thanks.